you're never going to get a perfect cup of coffee because that would imply you, you're done, you've finished. I mean, as a company, we definitely think we want to learn and improve every time we either source uh, some green coffee, meet a new coffee farmer, um, visit a new country for the first time, roast a batch of coffee, or even pull an espresso. It's something where we always want to get better and better at doing that. So we'll source coffee from different uh, countries throughout the year, depending on what's recently been harvested. Um, if you look at the Tropical Cancer and Tropical Capricorn, between them, different uh, countries will be growing coffee at different times of the year. When you've had a really heavy rainy season, it's like then all the coffee trees are going to flower, the buds from the flower will turn into the coffee cherries. When they're ripe, they'll be picked and processed and dried and then ready for export. It's printing with very broad strokes. And then ultimately we can get it to a certain time after it's been stripped off the tree. We want that to happen as fast as possible. So what we've currently got on the range and what's currently being sourced is, is ultimately trying to chase what's fresh and from producers who really care about very high quality uh, green coffee. So once we've got a, a green coffee that has arrived into the country and we've sort of approved from tasting samples of it um, that it's delicious and you know, clean and sweet and fresh and we're going to want to roast a few batches of it first in different ways to see how it ends up tasting afterwards. Um, so the roasting process you can kind of think of it as, as a bit of science because you, you track data when you're roasting, you, you know what temperature it is and how long you're roasting it for and like what, what you know, you can track a curve of the temperature even inside the roaster. So the actual way you roast it, is, it can be viewed as quite scientific but ultimately it's taste driven because by then tasting how those different roasting styles result in, in flavours in the cup um, will direct you into how to then continue roasting it. So it's almost like you create a recipe when you get a new coffee in. So for an AeroPress style coffee, a filter, maybe the plastic plunger, if you've got a really great quality green coffee, it's, it's almost like you don't want the roasting to really influence uh, the flavour. It, it should be transparent. It shouldn't impact um, on the innate characteristics of the coffee. Um, and with, with good quality greens, you can have something that tastes almost like, it can taste like fruit juice, it can taste like caramel. It's just super, you can have really nice, clear, clean, sweet flavours. Um, with espresso, we treat it a little differently because the actual preparation of the drink is so different and the resulting drink is so different. Very concentrated, almost 10 times as concentrated as, as a filter. Um, if, you, if you put a very, uh, your filter style roasting coffee into an espresso machine, you're likely going to get something which is a little thin in the body or maybe a little sour. Um, so we'll treat it a little differently, like we want to maybe enhance the body a little more, enhance the sugars a little more, um, and it'd be something that when it's prepared in a very concentrated manner, it still has good taste balance. Um, and I think understanding that the preparation and the resulting drinks are so very different will influence how you want to roast them to sort of get the best out of that, uh, out of that coffee. Coffee as an art, I think I would always think of it more as a craft, where you can apply a little scientific method as well as obviously it being taste driven. So I would say we, we yeah, we use scientific method for things like tracking data and knowing what we're doing each time and, and checking things. Um, whereas if it doesn't taste good at the end of it, it's, it's useless doing all that stuff. We need to be driven by what tastes good, who's putting in the effort at origin, um, how we make sure we're consistent roasting and, and preparing and training the roasters. And, and especially, it's very much performance as well at the very end of the spectrum with the baristas. You need to be looking after someone and being charming and being a host to them when you serve them a cup of coffee. Uh, so there, there are artistic elements, there are scientific elements. I think it's overall like getting involved in coffee is much more like learning a craft. Ultimately, a lot of the praise will go to the roaster and the barista. Um, but really, so much of the effort has gone in before it's even arrived in the country. Uh, if you've got a coffee farmer who's growing like a nice variety of coffee, they take care of their coffee trees, they're meticulous in the processing and the picking through of the green coffee, and then it's milled and exported in, in good conditions, that's where the real value lies. Um, we're just going to try to do our best with that ingredient that arrives through our doors. Uh, we're not doing anything magic to the coffee. It's, it's all really done at origin, the work. Uh, and that's why we're, we're really intrigued by working closer and closer with smaller producers and visiting producing countries. I mean, this year alone, we're, we're visiting El Salvador, Costa Rica, Guatemala. We've been in Kenya, we've been in Ethiopia, Rwanda. Um, and we know the farmers by their first name. And we've been back to visit the same people after having bought their coffee and we can see how it's changed um, uh, after working with them. So it, that, that I think is where the real value lies in a, a perfect cup of coffee or a good cup of coffee. Mm -hmm.